Carl, good to have you here again in Freiburg at the Institute for mm -hmm. Basic Income Studies and the Good yeah. Chair. We wanted to talk about the ethic and mm -hmm. an unconditional universal basic yeah. income. To start, why is this basic income given to everybody? Because we should ask the least of the people who get the least. If we're going to create a society where some people have a lot and there are a bunch of different rules that affect people in different ways and give people advantages and disadvantages, we should make sure the people at the very bottom, the people, have no, the people who have nothing else for their basic income, get enough that they can live on decently. And then uh, if they do something that the society recognizes as useful, they can get more. But even if they do nothing at all that everybody recognizes useful because we've made a society where they're the ones who have least, we should make sure they can live. And that is the same for everybody, for the rich, yeah. the poor, the ugly and the nice, the annoying yes. and... Mm. Okay. Yes. That is one point of ethics. Mm -hmm. Yes. Let's just link a second one. Okay. Usually, you have to do something in exchange mm -hmm. of getting a payment, getting an income, getting money, getting the right to live. So we are used to living in an understanding of to, to, to give, to, to get. Mm -hmm. And that is no longer the case with an unconditional mm -hmm. basic income. Why is it? What does it mean? Well, actually, we might be used to this idea, um, but we actually haven't established this idea. Um, when the property rights system was created, the kings and the governments of the European powers and the North American powers went around uh, taking the resources of the earth and giving them to the very privileged people uh, who already had a lot, uh, who were already friends of the king, and they didn't do anything for them. They took all the resources and they said, oh, you, then you, all the other people, all the masses of people throughout Europe and throughout all the other continents of the world, you have to work for these people to get something. You can't get something unless you work for it. But actually, uh, that's not how property works. If you own a lot of property, you don't have to work for it. Uh, so actually, um, basic income is the farthest thing. It's the farthest thing from something for nothing because you've all... The, the underprivileged people of the world has, have already done something for it. They've had rules imposed on them that give other people privileges and put them at the bottom. We're paying them for that. Everyone deserves it because the resources of the earth have been given to other people. That gives the answer already to a next question which is often asked. Is it money for nothing? Is it just for nothing? And uh, no, of course not. It's, 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 you don't have to do anything. But we've already done something. When people say basic income is something for nothing, they ignore the fact that we've already, that the underprivileged of the world have already done something for us. They, they've, we, they've, we've imposed rules on them and give them no choice. Uh, and we've imposed a system where other people get more and they get less. That's, it's not something for nothing, it's something in exchange for all these rules that have been imposed on you. We all disagree about what the rules should be, what the rules should be. And, and somebody's opinion is going to prevail. But if somebody's going to prevail, is going to prevail when all these other people have reasonable ideas, then these people who get to do things their way and get to have more need to do something for everyone else. Uh, and that is to pay them enough so they can live unconditionally. Right. And finally, it is not for nothing but to receive what others have done for you to receive th those things that are created in our society for each other to live from. So Carl, but wouldn't it be better to offer everybody 
a job, fair jobs, good jobs, paid work, I mean, mm -hmm. wouldn't that be better for a fair society? Everybody contributes to the society in a paid job. Yeah. Well, there are, there are two reasons I, I don't think you can really do that. Uh, one is, how are you going to make the rich work? Uh, the rich have all this money already. Uh, unless you take all that money away from them, they don't really have to work. They can live off the returns to the, the capital that they own. So when people say everyone work, they really mean everybody except the rich. And that's not a society. If, if, if one person has the, has the choice of whether to work or not, then everyone should have that choice. But another reason that you should, uh, well, I, I guess I give you three reasons why I shouldn't do it. A second reason why people should, shouldn't be asked to do it um, is that it's cruel. The things that you have to do to enforce that is that you have to be really cruel to the people who don't do it. What if somebody doesn't do it? You want the society where everyone prospers and everyone contributes and everyone contributes. What do you do to that person who doesn't do it? Um, and and really what it ends up meaning is, is either you're going to jail those people or they're going to be homeless. What else can you, if you don't do something like that, you do not get a society where everyone actually works. Then you have to have some unconditional thing like universal basic income to, for those people who, who don't. Um, and then a third reason is that you're always going to get it wrong. It's never going to be as fair as you think it is. Those decision makers up on high with their good jobs are going to say, oh yes, this is a fair wage and this is a fair, this is a fair working condition for those, those other people. I've never done a job like that, but that's what I think is fair. And they always will, they will always make mistakes in their own favor. Whereas if they give those people a basic income and say, yes, I want everybody to contribute, so I'm going to make it worth your while to contribute. I will give you such good wages and good working conditions that you'll want to contribute. Then we, the decision makers, are disciplining ourselves to be kind to other people, that we must ask for their contribution, not demand and force them to give a contribution. In which way is an unconditional basic income touching the ethic of work? Well, uh, I think people use that term, the work ethic, in a lot of different ways. And so it's, it's really hard to pin people down on, on, on what they mean. As you know, when somebody makes you that criticism, I think you should ask them, well, what is this? Explain to me, define this work ethic for me. And it's often very confused about exactly uh, what it is. There's, um, I think there's good ways and there's bad ways to define it. Um, the, uh, uh, I think the, the good way to think about the work ethic is that if you work, you will get ahead. Hard work pays off. We, we, need, um, we want a society where people who have initiative and do things and work hard, um, they will get ahead. And that's, uh, that's certainly true if you're, if you're working by yourself or you're working in groups. Uh, work is a, is a good way to get ahead. And we want people to learn that working is a good way to get ahead. That, I think, is a good thing. Um, but that does not require this sort of negative work ethic that, pe that people will say, well, everyone must work for everything they get. There's a lot of things wrong with that. Um, first of all, that we've never, we've never applied it fairly and we never will apply it fairly. Um, the, um, the wealthy, as, as, as I've been saying, the wealthy do not have to work for what they get. And other privilege, they can if they, they can work for more, but if you are wealthy, your money works for you. You do not have to work for your money. You put the money in an investment. You don't even have to decide what investments. You can, go, you can hire somebody to decide what investment it goes in, and you get the big share because it's your money, not because you did the work to decide what investments it goes, investments it goes into. Um, the... Uh, that, that we do not apply it to everyone. The people who have already had the easiest life, they do not get this ethic applied. And if you were even to create a socialist state, I don't know how you could apply it uh, evenly because your decision makers at the top would not really have to work in the, in the sense. And, and then we have all kinds of different jobs. 
uh, that some people can get and others can't. And it's not a perfect meritocracy, and you don't know how to build a perfect meritocracy, and I don't, and no one else knows how to build a perfect meritocracy. So some people are going to luck into the good jobs that have great working conditions, excellent pay, easy, uh, easier to fulfill, um, and for high rewards and high prestige. Some people are going to be lucky and get into those. Some will get in because they had a good work ethic, uh, but there's always luck along the way. So you're applying these things. So some people work very hard and you make them, you put them at the bottom. You start them out with disadvantages. You don't know how to create equal opportunity. And they end up at the bottom. You can never apply this equally. How can you force a person to play a game that's not fair? And my answer to that is, is you can't. It is wrong to force. If people want, if they choose... Voluntarily to play a game, it's voluntarily to play a game, it's not that's not fair, that's up to them. But if we have a basic income, we're not forcing anybody to play this unfair thing we call the economic system. We're giving the opportunity to do it, the opportunity to work hard and try to get ahead. But because we know that not everyone will and not everything about that is fair, we and, and then we're gonna say, if this isn't fair to you, you can just sit out. And these two versions of the work ethic, this positive one and this negative one, if we harp on this negative one, we actually make it harder for the, for the positive one to be a reality. If we say to everybody who isn't independently wealthy, you must work for everything we, you get at the threat of homelessness, then they will spend all of their time trying to make tomorrow's meal. And they will have to do the lowliest jobs that are very often dead-end jobs that don't lead you up. They don't have the time to retrain themselves, to think, to wonder, to ponder, how can I make the best contribution? What can I learn? What do I need to learn? What creative ideas can I do in order to make the biggest contribution? And that's why you see that a lot of people who make the biggest contributions, the people who start businesses and do scientific revolutions, the vast majority of them are from privileged backgrounds. We need to give everybody the starting point, the springboard. Basic income becomes like a springboard to work and get ahead in that way. I just, I just I had had that picture and thought about when you, when you go to the university and having your curses on ethic and UBI, what is your intention? Why do you do that? What is the message? What do you want to yeah. do good for the students? Why are you talking about ethics and UBI? What do you think is good to know about it for the students? Uh, I, well, of course, the first thing that any sh student should know on any topic is to think for yourself, but also to understand other people's thinking. If you're thinking for yourself and know, no, and know nothing about the way other people are thinking, you're just as much as an, an idiot if, if you don't, uh, as if you don't think for yourself and following. And I, I'm using the idiot in the, uh, uh, in the ancient, in the Greek sense, uh, where uh, an idiot chooses, is voluntarily choosing. Uh, to go down this path of ignorance. Uh, that, of course, is the first thing that I want people to, to students to know. But to talk about the ethical system of uh, uh, the ethical system of of all the goods and services and the economy and the things that are relevant to the U, U, to the UBI debate, um, the thing that I most want them to know is that society has framed how we look at this issue. And we need to question that frame. People want to start out with saying, okay, some people, some people have private property um, and other people don't. Uh, that's just natural. Um, then what is fair and equitable from that starting point? That is not the starting point. That is the outcome of past policies, many of which were unjust and designed to give privilege to some and underprivileged to others by race, by class, by gender, and by many other factors. 
Um, these rules were created in order to establish privilege and to get uh, and, and to establish privilege for this, this group and to give them not just power over their property, but power over other people. Of course, I want them to question that. But even, you know, if they don't agree with how I question it, I want them to be able to defend that frame, not just assume this frame and attack the things that they disagree with based on the assumption that all that background injustice is not worth talking about. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.